everyone. This is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to take what I call very uh, affectionately in my classes as the mother of all chord progressions. Now, the mother of chord progressions is there in a few songs. You will find it a lot in this canon song or the the, the wedding song, as I like to call it. They you. That, that sort of a song. And then uh, Maroon 5 have copied it in their song Memories. I don't know why they copied it almost down to the nearest note. It's a bit scary how these things are allowed these days. But anyway, so we are going to take the Packable Canon chord progression as I'm calling it. Johan Packable is the original composer. Do check his music out. He's an amazing orchestral composer. So it's a string arrangement. And the goal behind this lesson is not to learn the song per se, but to grow as a piano player by learning a very huge chord progression. As I said, it's the mother of all chord progressions. So we will learn the chord progression in its entirety, first of all. We will learn the theory of how to build those chords. We will learn how to form chord inversions, which are super important for piano players as well as composers, arrangers and so on. And lastly, in the lesson, we are going to learn how to play it in an arpeggiated way using a very interesting arpeggio technique, which I'd like to call as a melodic arpeggio technique to bring out the melody from the original song or any song which you're going to play in the future and also arpeggiate it. So it's going to be arpeggio and melody in one hand. So do stay tuned till the very end. Get your keyboards out. And there are also supplementing notes which will carry all the inversions and uh, everything which is presented very neatly for you to follow. Those notations will be available on our Patreon page, patreon.com slash jasonzack. It also gives you a place to support our channel and help us grow from strength to strength. And uh, if you haven't already, it'll be great if you could hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell icon for regular notifications. And without any further chatter let's get started <clears throat> so i'm going to take d major the original scale for, for the packable canon song and let me guide you through the chords first of all it's d major a major b minor f sharp minor g major d major then g major but what we do in the original is e minor over g i'll talk about that shortly and then A major. So again, repeating D major, A major, B minor, F sharp minor, G major, D major, G major, or else E minor with a G bass and A major. And let, let's look at that from a functional harmony perspective. That would be what degree or which scale degree do these chords fall under? So that's your one chord. Remember, just to recap, in a major scale, the one, the four, and the fives are all going to form major chords, while the two, the three, and the sixth degree will form minor chords, and the seventh will be a diminished chord, which I guess we seldom use, at least the music I've heard in my time. So you go D, which is the one chord, A, which is the five chord, B minor, which is the 6 minor, also known as the relative minor. And then F sharp minor, which is the 3 minor. G, which is the 4. And then the D, coming back to D, which is the 1. And then G, which is the 4 again. Or you could do E minor, which is the 2 minor. And then A major. I like to play E minor because it, it adds something or makes this chord progression to be a very good study for practicing chords of a particular key or scale. If you look at this, it's all the one fours and the fives, the major chords are taken up, are all covered rather. D, G and A are all used. Then you'll have E minor, F sharp minor and B minor. All the three minor chords are also used. So it's a nice way to practice or gang up all your chords together and put it together into a very beautiful, pleasant, 
catchy chord progression. The, hence, I called it the mother of all chord progressions because almost all the other chord progressions, if you take a subset of what I what we just saw, it's going to be there in almost all the pop songs out there or rock songs or country songs or gospel songs, whichever genre. So if you think about it, D, A, B minor, G, there you have it. You have your famous 1, 5, 6, 4 progression or D, A, F sharp, A. Again, very common, right? D, B, G, A. That's 1, 6, 4, 5. Is a subset of the mother progression. D, A, B minor, G. Again, 1, 5, 6, 4, very popular. Again, part of the mother. Okay? D, B minor, E minor, which is your 2. A major. These are all sub sub subsets. Even the 2, 5, 1 is there. So it's well worth learning this progression in its entirety. Okay? So let's recap the chords now. D major, A major, B minor, F sharp minor, G major, D major, E minor. I'm doing E minor. In the original, it's actually E minor over G bass. So that's what we call as a slash chord. A slash chord is a triad played in the upper register or in simple words, your right hand and in your left hand, you'll be playing a different bass note. That's E minor over G and then A major over A. Okay. Now to play this progression really well, what I'm going to try and do is take one of the parts from the original canon with, and I stress on the term one of the parts because a canon, a classical canon, when it's composed, you'll have many parts just cascading over each other. So this is literally the first melodic part which you'll hear, the easiest melodic part. And then the more complicated parts like the, the tune which Maroon 5 tried to rip off and unfortunately failed to even rip it off well. So let's start with that very basic package of notes. I'll sing it first for you along with the chords. That will be... La, 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 la. Again. That's your loop. Now, each of the notes which I sang right now are part of the triad. So if I sing that is the third note or the middle note or the third, the major third of the D major chord. So since it's the soprano part or the catchy part played by the violin player, you'd want to sneak it up top or project it up top so that the soprano part is heard by the listener. So that in order to do that, you have to invert your chord. So D major, as we probably know, has all its inversions. And I would encourage you when you're figuring out the inversions, write the triad, write all the available triads by their notes, D, F sharp, A. But go one step further, write it in a circle. So by writing it in a circle, you, you have the three shapes available for you right there. All you need to do is write it in a circle and count clockwise. So it will be D, F sharp, A, F sharp, A, D, A, D, F sharp. So you have your root position, D, F sharp, A, F sharp, A, D, which is your first inversion, A, D, F sharp, which is your second inversion. Now, which inversion should you play to keep F sharp on the top? You would want to perhaps play your second inversion because the second inversion carries the soprano note which we are targeting on top. So F sharp. So that's D major in its second inversion. What's the second note I'm singing? La. And what is that note? That's an E. And I my chord is A major. So how do I play A major with E on the top in the root position? So that'll be la, la. 
again la, la. So, and it's also nice on the ear because it provides for some great voice leading la, la. and let's journey forward so he, the next two notes are la la so la over b minor so we are sticking b d on top and we thus have to invert b minor again in its second inversion in order to play the d up top so la la e on top d with a b minor with a d on top and then c sharp with f sharp minor as the chord to is the root f sharp minor and the c sharp on the top okay so uh, the four chords again which are four out of the eight which is a huge progression lot of fun la d major la a major la b minor la f sharp minor again la d major la a major inverted to get that e on top la inverted to get the d on the top la inverted to get the c sharp on the top so you can also look at the journey of the melody notes to go down and the bass notes of the chord don't really eff- get affected it's ta 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 ra so the bass plays the root or the true roots of the chords so it's only the melody on the top la 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 which i'm proposing to play with the inversion of the chord such that the top note of the melody stays its ground and is the soprano or the most catchy sound for the listeners ear la la that's e on the top la d la c sharp now let's journey forward we are going down again so la that's b on the top with g major G, that's the g major chord with the b on the top la 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 that's a four going to one that itself is a very common cadence we call it the plagal cadence or the amen cadence in church music so la b on the top a on the top one more time b on the top a on the top but the chords are g major d major G major D major okay la la and now la that's e minor with a b on top so it's your root shape la la back to a major but a major is now going to be played in a different inversion not the old inversion which we did earlier in the progression we want c sharp on the top so invert a major with e a c sharp keeping c sharp on the top now all this is written down for you you just you can grab a copy of the notes on patreon it's just 5 dollars a month for not only this everything we've done in the past and what we are going to do in the future as long as you are part of our channel you'll keep getting the notes for all the lessons which we do on our youtube page so a whole thing again the eight chord progression i'm going to sing the melody note up top and i'm going to play the bass roots of the chord in the left hand and my entire right hand has been readjusted or inverted so that the soprano note which i'm singing is on the top register let's see how that goes and let's just do each chord as a semi brief and count four each time so you get your time to shift between chords and right after this i'm going to tell you the fingering to change better and then we are going to do the arpeggio movement so do stay tuned a few more things to learn but very important stuff so stay tuned la 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 okay i'm just making that top note a bit more obvious for you to hear la f sharp la a with e on top la b minor with d on the top la 
F sharp minor with C sharp on the top, La G major with La B on the top, D major with A on the top, and then E minor with B on the top, A major with C sharp on the top. Okay, without me talking too much. So you could do G A at the end or two E minor. Okay, so that's about the chords. That's about the inversions and all the theory. Now let's take this to town with a couple of arpeggio patterns. Prior to which, I'd like to give you a few of the fingering tips out there, general fingering tips to play chords, and some of my own. So. If you just study your fingers, the general guideline would be your ring finger should be allocated to a black note if the last note is black. Doesn't matter if the previous notes are black. It's just if the last note is black, I would recommend the ring because it's a taller finger. The pinky finger being smaller, you can save the guy for the white notes. So in this case, it's a great opportunity to play your ring finger. So and you save your middle finger to play the next chord. Now here's the challenge: How do I flip over? So you could actually just flip over, and then flip over. But you're going to lose the sustain. You're going to have to lift this and then shift, right? So there are a lot of ways to overcome that. One is obviously with the pedal. To but with the pedal if you don't lift it it's going to sound bad all the sounds collide with each other so it's good to start without pedal and get the fingering absolutely right so a trick technique would be it looks well some might argue that it doesn't look conventional or it looks a bit unorthodox or ugly but doesn't matter because people are going to listen to what you do they're not going to judge you by seeing you right or your at least your fingers so ta ra now i want to get into this position where so i could do ring or ring with the middle and then save the index there na na and then flip over so when i am flipping over i can flip even before i shift to the next chord but i don't want to lose the hold of the chord na see i can kind of flip my fingers out get a nice legato sound even though my fingers are swapping themselves out with other fingers but the sustain is still there right so it works for me so that allows me to bring my index finger to f sharp and play b minor like this again remember what i told you assign your ring finger for the black note if it's up top just drop this guy down for f sharp minor there we go now for g major i can just bring back the ring finger here and use the index finger here and the thumb comes down and then these two fingers slide down or the middle finger gets added then you climb up and and then ring finger now here's the challenge you need to go all the way back up top so again you may want to adopt a little bit of finger uh, flipping or finger swapping to take you back up 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 4 1 2 3 4 
the organ player needs to get that legato going otherwise the organ doesn't sound so good to begin with and this is not taught very often in conventional keyboard players you know repertoire or training but flipping it as you can hear gives you a very smooth sound and it's very easy on my brain i don't have to think which finger should i use it's just what happens it's my instincts taking over right survival instincts so to speak so there we go and uh, important tip as you are also observing whether you adopt the swapping technique or not i'm always planning ahead for the next chord so even if there's a small jerk motion or a jump between the chords 1 2 3 4 2 3 four. you see at the 4 or just before the next chord i get into shape 1 2 3 lift 2 you could even that do that 2 3 lift that also works 4 then you're consistently giving a rest at the 4 that i think is completely cool 3 4 1 2 3 and 2 3 4 as you can see my instincts are doing this finger swapping thing it works for me 3 4 1 2 3 4 keeping the fingers engaged and ready to play the next event so now that the fingering is done the next thing before we conclude is to play all this stuff with an arpeggio pattern which brings that violin melody into the forefront which is but not compromising on the chords you don't want to do it's now boring so let's develop an arpeggio pattern i'm going to show you the pattern on d major then we'll explore the remaining chords so the pattern is high note low note middle note low note also what we could say h l m l high low middle low h l m l and if possible try to sustain the high note not if possible i would recommend you to work on it this would also improve your finger independence capabilities do not do doesn't sound so nice so there we go that i think works well okay of course you have the pedal which adds some resonance but use the pedal primarily just to give you that resonance which you need and maybe just before shifting because it's an arpeggio your fingering will be a lot more easy to shift because you are not playing it all together so you have all that time to jump your fingers but do it well ahead of time so as you can hear whatever the, whatever the soprano violins were doing you are able to execute with the top most finger so in a sense you're dividing your piano normally people think that the piano is divided into two the bass clef and the treble clef in this case we are kind of dividing it into three which i think is really cool you have the soprano violin you have the other backing instruments played as a arpeggio and you still have your bass so so slowly and that's serving the soprano violin sustained part i can't do the vibrato like a violin can do or like my voice can do but you get the idea the piano has its limitations so we work within that of course which is why every instrument deserves its respect you know including uh, a triangle perhaps even a triangle is a good instrument all instruments are powerful in their own way so the piano will not be better than every instrument so in how in other words it can't do vibrato it can't do you know bending of notes or long notes and all of the other things which a violin a trumpet a flute or the human voice can do so hold on to the top note and in my music i'm playing eighth notes so i would like to count it as 1 2 
वन एंड टू एंड थ्री एंड फोर एंड वन एंड टू एंड ऑब्जर्व हाउ आई क्रॉस ओवर टू द थर्ड कॉर्ड वन एंड टू एंड एंड फोर एंड इवन बिफोर आई प्रेस द कॉर्ड आई क्रॉस also using the pedal for additional resonance but i'm lifting it before each chord so if you're not sure of lifting don't use the pedal d e minor a and i'm trying to play octaves in my left hand which i think makes it a much more richer cello like sound the soprano looks like we are doing justice to both to bass to soprano g bass e and the soprano now you could speed this up and play 16th notes if you wish then you just repeat each chord twice the only challenge i see to this you're repeating the top soprano twice which is not the original isn't it that's not what's going on in the song so what we do check that out so i'm adding I'm copying the top high note and adding it as a lower note which is the down octave of the high in the same pattern high low middle low high low middle low it's still the high note but you're playing it in the lower octave let's see how that work change and as best as i possibly can i am clinging on to that high note for dear life because it's the soprano violin we have to respect that tune we can't change it so this will be nice when you're playing semi quavers and speeding it up a bit to do arpeggios in the left hand maybe a topic for our next video it's maybe a big cup of tea to handle at the moment but just to give you an idea of what we could do in the future let us know in the comments if you how how you'd like to take this forward and also how you're faring with this existing lesson Okay so the left hand can also do some fancy stuff rather than the rather than the cello part which is a bit simple okay so let's just recap what we've done we've taken the canon progression the packable canon progression which i call as the mother of all chord progressions primarily because all the other pop chord progressions pop song progressions for years and years and years have are just a subset of the mother so the chords again why we call it such an influential chord progression is because all the three major chords are well there all the three minor chords are there the three major chords are 1 4 5 the three minor chords are 2 3 6 then we learnt it with the correct inversions because we are trying to serve the soprano violin in the top end then after we did inversions with the bass roots in the left hand we then arpeggiated it and brought some energy into the performance we did quaver arpeggios and semi quaver arpeggios so that's about it guys hope you found the lesson useful the notes are waiting for you on patreon that would also help support our channel and if you'd like to learn music with our school in a very structured manner you can always consider joining us we have virtual courses so you can learn from your house or wherever you're located at you can also come to one of our centers if you're based in uh, bengaluru you can also well if the time zones just don't match or if your schedules are a bit 
erratic and you still want a structured approach to learning the piano, we have a bunch of videos waiting for you at nathanielschool.com under our video courses catalog. So you could look at you know, things like the Everything for Life bundle, which will give you a lot of uh, modules to learn, including books for each of the modules. So hope you have fun learning music with us in the near future. And do let us know what you thought about this lesson. Do consider giving the video a like. Hit the subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers and catch you in the next one.